Hi there. I thought I'd show you a method I'm going to use for installing the small Dubro hinges, which have got hinge pins, into a small vintage model that I'm building. Now it's a 49 inch wingspan, kind of free flight model with a, a bit of radio assist just to keep it in the, uh, in the area of the airfield. It's not a high performance model, but I think this is a really good technique. It's secure, it's easy to do, and um, it, you're not at risk of seizing up the hinges. With the bigger Dubro hinges, with the hinge pins, I'm quite happy to put them in with epoxy, and I know on the Dubro site it suggests CA as well. But with these small hinges, and they really are quite small, I think there's a high risk of freezing these up. And as I'm using micro servos in this model, I don't want stiff hinges. So anyway, first off, I will show you how to cut the slot for these hinges. They're lovely and thin, and then we'll have a look and actually how I'm going to hold them in place. First thing is you need to find the centre line and you can either do that with a centering tool like this which has got a little pin there you just twist it and slide it and it will just put a centre line in like that. Alternatively you can just do it by eye but you need to make sure that your hinges are all in line and central. Now once you've done that I would get a hinge measure the width of the hinge on the balsa no point in making a slot that is too big so let me just do that all fingers and thumbs here okay so if that's where we want to get our slot we get a nice sharp scalpel and we just run that scalpel down where we need the slot and we don't do that uh, very deep at first it just wants to be nice and shallow. Obviously we've got a sharp scalpel here uh, we need to be quite careful that we don't uh, we don't cut ourselves. So there we go and now there we have a slot just run that backwards and forwards and this hinge now should just slip in there really nice and snugly. Yes that is a lovely tight fit and quite easy to do even on a, a really thin piece of balsa like this. And I see no reason why you couldn't do this on a, a 1 8 piece of balsa as well. Because uh, these hinges, as you can see, really are quite thin. So what we're going to do now is we have got the slots cut previously. I now need to cut the covering. So I'm just going to do that with my scalpel. Just reacquaint ourselves with the hinges and run that scalpel up and down. And now we can slot our hinges in to, uh, into there. These are quite a tight, nice tight fit. And that fits in there great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these hinges because you can see them through the tissue and it kind of looks ugly and the method we're using it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to trim these hinges and I'm going to put all this together and make sure that the fin and the um, rudder assembly work nicely with the hinges before we secure them in place. Right I've now got this hinged and you can see it's a really tight fit there. If I was pushing glue in the chances of glue getting in there is quite high and trying to clean it out would be quite difficult. So anyway, I've got this pushed together. You can just about see the back of the hinge maybe just sticking th into the structure there. So just very slightly longer than this 316. So what we're going to do to secure this is we're going to peg it. And I'm going to drill a 2mm hole in the middle of this 316. I know I'm mixing my uh, imperial and my metric here, sorry. But I'm going to drill a 2mm hole to insert a cocktail stick in this 316 balsa and this is an example of what it's going to look like. You can see there I've drilled that, punched the peg in and then it, and the important bit is to CA this afterwards and that is really solid. You, it, it, because it's CA it doesn't weaken this, uh, the actual structure, the balsa and yet that will not come out. That is really, really strong. 
So it's, I think it's a really good solution to this. So I'm going to drill the holes now and, uh, and we'll put this peg in. We've now got our four holes drilled, one in the centre of each hinge. And I've got a cocktail stick. I've just put a slight bevel on there just to aid it going through. And I prefer to do it longer than necessary and then to cut it once it's in there rather than to try and knock a little piece in. I, I just find trying to knock a little piece in, it falls over, damages the structure, whatever. So. We're just going to put that on and give it a light tap with a hammer on a nice flat surface. There we go, you can hear the note change as it hits the, um, the bench. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a scalpel and just very carefully score, and we do have to be careful, around the edge of this, uh, this cocktail stick. And once we've done that, it will snap off nice and cleanly. We may need to use the tip of the cocktail stick to uh, just to clean it up. But we do, as you can tell, we have to be really careful not to cut or mark the covering. Now that should, there we go. See that has just broken off. And that is a pretty clean break, but I will just use the tip of that just to clean it up. Yeah, just a little bit more from this side. There we go. I mean, this is probably the most <laughs> the most risky bit of the whole process because uh, we're so close to our covering with a sharp knife. But um, there, yeah, that feels great. And what we can do is just. Yeah, and you can hardly feel that now. So I will get on and peg the rest, and then I will show you what I'm gonna to do to cover that. Right, I've now got all four pegged and nicely smoothed off. You can't feel that at all, hardly. And I've just gone around and put a blob of CA on the, uh, on the pin of each one. And it's worth testing your nozzle first so you don't put on a, a, a a big dollop that goes on your covering, just a, a nice small amount. Now the CA isn't needed to hold the peg in as such, but it is there to restore the integrity of this piece of 316 that we've just drilled a hole in. So by gluing the peg in, we're, we're keeping that nice and strong. There's no way the peg's going to come out on its own. Now I'm going to use this hole cutter to cut some round pieces of tissue that can be placed over there and just um, stuck on with the polyurethane that I used to cover this. And rather than just trying to cut the tissue like this, which I don't think will work, no it hasn't, the best way to do it is to get a piece of card. This is just a piece of uh, like drinks carton. And if we put our tissue on that and then have a go, just give it a twist and we will come off with a, pe a round piece of tissue. There we go. So there's one. Right, now I've got my discs of tissue cut. I'm going to go around with this polyurethane, which is the finish on this fin. And I'm just going to put that over, the, um, over where the peg is. Now this is a polyurethane that I know is diesel, glow and petrol resistant. And that will just cover over like that. It's not going to cover it up entirely. It just kind of masks it. And we can, if we want, put two pieces on just to get a little bit of better coverage. So a little bit more polyurethane and another one of these. Now this still needs a final coat, which is good. So we can blend it all in with a final coat. Right, I've now got these 
pegs covered over with a little bit of tissue and polyurethane. And as I said, it still needs a final coat of polyurethane just to finish this off. Obviously being very careful to avoid those hinges. But for me, this is a really good technique. I, I really like it because it avoids the stress and the risk of getting glue into the moving parts of those hinges and freezing them up which you can do if you smear the epoxy on the hinge and then try and slide them in. You always get uh, epoxy squeezing out, or almost always. And with this being such a small hinge and such a close structure, I think the risk is, is greatly increased. So anyway, you might like the method, you might not, but I thought I'd share it with you. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful and interesting.